last night. Uh, not much snow left at this point. I think maybe if we have another another couple nights like we've had, you know, it's going to be back to bare ground, and then I'll be able to start looking for new wild edible shoots coming up out of the ground. So I'm excited about that. But one thing that I'm most excited about at this point is that it's been a really rough winter in terms of well, you know, there's the basic health uh, stuff of keeping your, yourself warm and keeping uh, calories in your body, but there are all sorts of other things you, uh, in terms of you know your health and your well-being that you have to keep on top of. And one of the big challenges this winter uh, was uh, skin care. You know, keeping my skin clean so I wouldn't get rashes. In fact, one of the big deals uh, is my feet because uh, you know they're pretty much always in boots. Uh, I try to you know keep them warm and dry whenever I, I could, but uh, you know it's hard, especially in the winter. I uh, I've always been prone to getting athlete's foot when I have my feet stuck in boots all the time. And uh, one of the, the big ways that I've been able to avoid that this year, again, is just trying to keep my feet warm and dry whenever I've been able to do that. Uh, and I've also been um, tapping some things that were in my bug out bag. Uh, I've always had a medical kit in my bug out bag. Uh, right here, as a matter of fact. And it's got all sorts of uh, you know, different helpful items, and some of them have been real lifesavers. Uh, I think the most important things that I've uh, had in here just for you know this past winter have been uh, Neosporin. When I've gotten a cut or something and I didn't want to risk it possibly getting infected, I was able to put Neosporin on my cut, and it just gave me that peace of mind and probably the actual uh, sanitizing benefit of uh, knowing that I was uh, cleaning out that wound, it was going to heal faster, and there was less likely of getting an infection. Uh, getting an infection out in an environment like this could be really bad. You know, if you don't have access to antibiotics or whatever, uh, that can take a, you know, situation from, you know, totally fine to emergency uh, pretty quickly. So Neosporin was something that I had in here that was really uh, helpful for me. Another thing that's been really helpful, and I'll just kind of fold, uh, fold out through some of this stuff, was uh, things for, uh, you know, general skin care. I've got this Burt Bees uh, ointment, which was really great if I had an abrasion or my hands were just getting really dry, either from working with the fire or being cold and just the cold, dry air of the winter. Having some kind of an ointment that you can put on your skin to prevent it from cracking is another benefit, not just to keep you you know, more comfortable because nobody likes to have dry cracking skin. But if you do get dry cracking skin, that's a vector for bacteria or, you know, uh, infection to, uh, to get into your body. So having some way of preventing dry cracked skin, I think was really important. And another thing which I mentioned uh, relates to the fact that I sometimes get athlete's foot uh, uh, is I, I've always kept uh, some uh, gold bond uh, foot powder in my bag just for that exact reason. I've always been kind of prone to getting uh, athlete's foot. Um, I don't know what it is with me, but whenever my feet are in a cold, dark environment, uh, you know, shit happens. <laughs> so I've always tried to uh, prep against that. Um, you know, just toasting them by the fire is really great uh, for helping them to get dried off. But it's really helpful if I have a system for trying to keep them dry when I can't have my feet nice and warm and cozy by the fire. And uh, what I've developed is this. So the way that I start is I just take some of the foot powder and rub it right into my toes. I'm trying to not waste any of it because obviously you only have so much of it. Just getting it everywhere between the toes, all around, and maybe a little bit on the pad of the foot as well. And then what I do is I take one of these napkins, which I was fortunate enough to come across. These I actually not kept in my kit, though I think in the future I probably would begin keeping these. Fold them in half and I just weave them between my toes just like this. And bring that flap over there, tuck that over like that. It's a nice little package at this point. And then I'm going to take the sock and just slide the sock right on, keeping it all together like that. And I'll do that on the other foot as well. Just getting some on there again, trying to minimize waste between the toes. All over. It's much easier to prevent a problem usually like this than to solve it after the fact. So 
getting it all around there. And I used to do just foot powder. You know, I said I've been kind of prone for a while to getting athlete's foot. I used to do only foot powder, and it was helpful. But doing the foot powder plus the napkin or paper towel works also. Doing the combination, I found was really, really beneficial. Just wrapping it around all those toes. I don't, really, I don't wrap this toe because this toe is separated from all the other toes anyway. So keep it like that. And you just fold your sock on up over all of that and keeping it all nice and tight around your feet. That makes a huge difference when you have to be putting your feet back into boots to have that kind of dry uh, environment down in there if you have to have your feet in a dark, cold, damp environment. Another thing that's been really important is just keeping your whole body clean. I mean, it feels good to get your, uh, the dirt off your body, your oils off your body, your dead skin off your body. But if you don't do those things, it can result in all sorts of skin rashes and things. So I've really made sure that I've tried to keep up with my hygiene. Uh, now, during the winter, it's kind of hard to take a comfortable shower, and warm water is always going to be the best for washing off body oils. So I've created this little pan, which I use to heat up water over the fire, and I just use a cloth, in fact, this is a piece of cloth right here, um, to go and clean myself off. Uh, whenever I've been doing that, you always want to start with the top of your body, your face, and then kind of work your way down uh, so that you're starting, you know, in the areas that are kind of the cleanest and then moving to the dirtiest. You really want to end with your butt, <laughs> you know, to put it uh, kind of crassly. Uh, you don't want to wash your butt and then bring the cloth up to your face. And you, know, you do the best that you can with that. Having the warm water helps a lot because it makes it more comfortable and it makes it more effective. Um, but you know, whatever you can do to try to keep your body clean and um, sanitary is a really important uh, thing to do, especially if you're going to be out in the woods for extended periods of time. Beyond that, also trying to keep my clothes clean, uh, washing them whenever I have been able to, and letting them uh, dry out outside. Uh, I was always a big proponent of line drying clothes, you know, back when I had great things like a house. Uh, people would always say, oh, you're kind of nuts because you don't use a dryer. What do you do in the wintertime? Well, if you take damp clothes or wet clothes and you put them outside, even in the dead of winter, unless you're having, you know, snow and sleet every single day, if you have days that are reasonably dry, after a couple of days, your clothes dry. That's just the way it is. And if you want to accelerate that, you can put it near the fire. And uh, also, uh, having the smoke from the fire, uh, it kind of gives them a nice kind of rustic campfire uh, smell to them. And I, I, I like to think that uh, the smoke would be uh, antiseptic in some way because it sure feels uh, toxic to life when it's going in my face and my eyes. <laughs> so I like to think that, uh, you know, whatever critters might be trying to make a home move in on my, my clothes are going to feel the same kind of awfulness if I'm smoking my clothes as well. So that's what I've been doing all winter long. It's been a it's been rough living in somewhere that's not the most hygienic environment and trying to keep yourself clean and sanitary. It's challenging, but it was made a lot easier for me uh, because I had this simple bag of basic medical items. And I'll go into a couple of the other things that I have in here as well. I noted a few that I found really helpful over the winter. Another one that was helpful is hand sanitizer. I think having hand sanitizer is certainly a benefit. And I think, you know, if there's anything that would never be politicized and everyone could agree on, it'd be good hygiene and keeping yourself free of germs and disease. I can't imagine any circumstances where any, anybody could uh, disagree on that. Uh, other things uh, I have in here is you know, just simple bandages. Uh, I also have uh, cough drops. If I ever had a sore throat, uh, you know, you don't want to be uh, having a, a persistent cough. So if you can have some cough drops that will keep you from coughing, it can make it so that, you know, if you were going to have something develop into a worse sort of uh, coughing situation, you know, pneumonia or whatever, you can try to prevent that by having cough drops to kind of soothe your throat and not get into the point where you're actually doing damage to yourself by coughing. Uh, other things in here, just basic soap. Obviously that came in uh, handy while I was doing bathing. Uh, nail clippers are in here. Tweezers are in here. Those are really helpful. I'm More than one occasion I've had to implement the tweezers and bring those out. Uh, so just having a basic kit of basic health and sanitary items I think has gone a long way to take this experience and make it a lot more survivable. Another important aspect of personal hygiene is keeping your teeth clean. Now, I had the foresight to put toothpaste and a toothbrush in my backpack. That was always in my bug out bag. I also have dental floss in there. 
But those things are only going to last so long. So whenever I can, I'm using things from the natural environment to keep my teeth clean. And one great resource is willow. This is a little twig of will willow. If you're ever looking for willow, a great place to look for it is near streams and things. It likes wet soil. Uh, and I'm going to take a little piece of this off. Just use a knife to slice a little bit off. And then what I'm going to do is just take some of the, uh, the bark just off the tip, off here. So that's going to leave me with just the stick. And then I'm going to take the stick and kind of chew on it a little bit. And what I'm doing while I'm chewing on it is I'm taking all the fibers and kind of splaying them all out, kind of fraying them out, almost to make like a brush. There are also natural tannins in willow that... Uh, are uh, antimicrobial and they're going to help clean your teeth too. So at this point I'm starting to get kind of a brush end here and I can take this and use that to kind of polish up my teeth a little bit. You really want to make sure you're not losing little bits of the, uh, the inner bark and everything in your mouth because then that's stuff to have to floss out later. But it does make a nice, a nice little brush here. If you do go out looking for willow, be aware that if you can't identify it, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't want to just go randomly sticking plants in your mouth. Plants have a lot of benefits that they can share with us, but some of them are toxic, some of them are deadly, and you don't want to mess with that. So if you don't know what you're dealing with, definitely don't put it in your mouth. Another thing that I find when I come out here all the time is that it's a great view of the sky, and that has been sitting there for the better part of a week, I think at least. Usually they're moving. I'm not sure if there's something over there that might be worth checking out or avoiding. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.